I'm in a healthy patch of Dallas grass today because Dallas grass is our number one weed in central Mississippi, no doubt about it. If you don't have Dallas grass, I'd love to shake your hand because Dallas grass is absolutely everywhere. Obviously behind me it's more prevalent than it is in a lot of places, but if you don't have Dallas grass, then somebody has done something to get rid of it or you've done a really, really good job of maintaining your lawn in a way that doesn't allow any gaps of coverage. You can see behind me, uh, there's some places in this yard where for different reasons, the grass has died off. But if you have a gap in your turf canopy, which is almost definitely gonna happen at some point in time, Dallas grass is probably gonna find a way to get in there. Uh, so this video is to help identify Dallas grass, because if you don't know how to identify it, then you're either treating something that you think is Dallas and it's not, or you're treating your yard thinking you're fine and you don't have Dallas when actually you do have Dallas. And so this video is gonna help you to identify it, understand why it's there and how to get rid of it. And so uh, thanks for watching this video. Dallas grass, like so many other weeds, came from some other part of the world. It was brought here to the United States more as a pasture grass for cattle to feed. Um, you can identify Dallas. One way to identify it is these seed heads. They're very characteristic. Um, they've got one at the top terminal, right up here at the top, going to the side there, and then one below it, and then one out beside it. It doesn't always only have three. In home lawns where it's mowed more frequently, you typically see three. This one has four at the moment. It can have more than four. But typically you only see about three of those. You, you know, as it matures more, it's gonna have a lot of black hanging down. I'm gonna go and see if I can find some with black. Um, but this is really tall, as you can see, and that's also another way to know if you have Dallas grass, especially if it's March, April, May, and you have something this tall. This is not crabgrass. This is not Johnson grass. I'm gonna show you Johnson grass here in just a little bit. But Dallas grass grows very tall. Crabgrass this time of year is still, uh, you know, it, in May it, it can be more closer to the size of my palm. March and April is going to be teeny tiny. Everybody calls it crabgrass. It's not crabgrass. It's a lot more difficult to control and prevent than crabgrass is. Here's some of those black frills that I was referring to on the seed head of the Dallas. Dallas grass is the first thing to pop up after you mow. It goes straight up into the air and then it puts those ugly black seed heads out and into the open for everybody to enjoy and see. Johnson grass on the other hand is three feet tall right now. This is up to my waist. But Johnson grass, when you look down towards the base, all it has is stem and it's growing straight up. And so if you could imagine, if you cut this and you cut this regularly and there's no leaves down here, for the plant to photosynthesize, make sugars to feed the roots, then it's just kind of like cutting a tree. You know, when those little treelings come up in your yard in March and April, if you cut them a time or two, they're gone because there's no leaves for it to, uh, to continue to support itself. Whereas Dallas grass, it grows in a clump down close to the ground. And so if you mow it, all you do, I'm gonna find some here that we've been mowing, it just starts growing more sideways. Um, and so that's why it's able to survive in a home lawn. It's just got a different look than crabgrass, than ryegrass. Um, these are more vertical than normal, but it does not have the collar going all the way around. The edges of the leaf, by the way, if you get them at the right stage of growth, they've got that rippled edge. They don't all have a rippled edge. See, that one does not have that rippled edge. But if it's a really mature leaf, um, It'll have that rippled edge, and the back has a very pronounced midrib. A very pronounced midrib on the back. All right, so to understand how to control Dallas grass, you gotta understand the differences of new Dallas grass and old Dallas grass. And I'm gonna use the difference to also talk about, or I'm gonna use crabgrass to help explain the difference too, okay? Um, so crabgrass, is an annual. It comes up every year, it sets its seed, and then it dies. So it's an annual because it, it only lives one year and then it dies. It sets its seed, which is blue. Green is vegetative. February, March, April, May, summertime, fall, winter. 
comes up in March, April, May, if you keep it mowed, is the left column for the plants that stayed mowed to, so that you can kind of get a slight idea of the difference. I know they're green globs and may not be so easy to see what I'm trying to get at, but just stick with me, you'll see. May, it, it's got a lot of horizontal growth when it's mowed and it gets a little more clumpy if it's not mowed. In the summertime, it really gets horizontal and I think that's where my guess is that's where crab, the word crab comes from. It just gets real crabby and horizontal and grows along the ground. It does get more bushy if it's not mowed. Um, and then in the fall, just like with Dallas grass, um, it starts to uh, to go away. Uh, one difference with crabgrass is, well, let's just say that this is when crabgrass sets its seed on the ground. See the blue dots? And then in the wintertime, it dies. Dallas grass does not die. It just goes dormant. So it's disappeared and it's dormant. But crabgrass, it, it's, you'll be left behind with this black kind of skeletonized stems along the ground. You can really even tell February and even part of March, you'll see the black skeletonized stems on crabgrass. But it dies because it cannot tolerate the cold. Dallas grass can tolerate more cold, and so it only goes dormant. It does not die. What it does right here in the fall is it sends its energy down into the roots. And so you've got this really fibrous root system. I could have drawn a root system on all of these. Dallas has a lot more roots and so it's able to come back vegetatively the next year. So you can prevent new Dallas by seed because yes, Dallas grass does germinate from seed just like crabgrass so you can prevent new ones but if it made it through a year of its life it's going to have put out seeds all year long for, da for Dallas grass and then these seeds are going to be on the ground and you can prevent new ones the next year but if if the plant you know these plants that live through the year they're going to be right back old dallas they're going to be right back next year and they're going you're going to see some green dallas in february and if you really pay attention you'll notice it's in the exact same place the exact same clump because it is the exact same plant from last year because Dallas is a perennial. It's not an annual. It lives year after year after year. Once it does germinate and it becomes a plant, that plant will always be there. You have to then deal with it post-emerge. You can prevent new ones with pre-emerge. Once it emerges, you cannot pre-emerge it. You have to now, this year, you have to, well, both years, once it comes up, you have to deal with it post-emerge. So what can we do? So we got, we got Dallas grass. It's up. Now I need to deal with it post-emerge. What can I do? All right, so what can you do with Dallas grass once it's up? Well, I'm gonna be putting out more videos this year. Look at our YouTube channel, uh, type in Dallas grass to search for more videos throughout the summer. But for right now, I just wanna show you some pictures of experiments that we've done at our office just to show you that there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of information to give, but this video is already getting long. And so I'm just gonna have to say, reach out to us and we'll be glad to go through some options. We'll be glad to come and look at your yard to go over some options. Uh, we do have a Dallas grass reduction program now that we're really excited about that's uh, tailored towards the specific type of turf grass that you have in your yard, or at least the major type of turf that you have in your yard. So please reach out to us. We'll be glad to help. We'll be glad to get you some more information. So as you can see, Dallas is uh, quite complicated. I could say so much more, but I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, if you have any uh, suggestions on future videos about Dallas, I'll be glad to consider those. We're always here to help. We're trying to get information out there for your knowledge, for your learning. Um, and uh, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.